Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, we don't get to speak with many uh, fighters that aren't fighting on Saturday during fight week. So is this your idea to continue this uh, kind of media tour you've been doing since you beat Amanda Nunes? Uh, you know, I just want to do any obli uh, media obli obligation that I can. I'm trying to get out there and, and, and get as much as I can. So they point, I shoot. Was this kind of a conscious decision you made, like, even before your fight with Amanda, where if I win, I'm going to keep myself out there because we've seen people win the belts and they kind of disappear for a bit until they have another fight booked and then they're doing the media rounds again. Yeah, I was shocked. They were like, man, you're so easy to work with. You know, the champions aren't usually like this. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? This is this is what we do it for. So as long as I can bring as much attention to the UFC and to my fights and people watching me fight, that's what I'm going to do. Outside of all the media obligations, how has life been as the new Bantamweight champion? You know, I was just talking about that. I was I was saying, you know, this particular thing irritated me, and then this thing irritated me, and then I was like, but when you win, nothing irritates you. It's like it was all like water off a duck's back at that point. I was just like, you know, I'm the champ. It's, there's not really much that can bother me at this point. Well, even as the champ, on, on the ch when you're chasing the belt, you're always looking for the next person to get you closer to the belt. Now that you are, everyone's chasing you, and you're also in that position where you probably know who you're fighting next, and that's Amanda Nunes. So how is it not constantly having to chase the next person and the next person and the next person? You know, I, I, I've never done this before. This is a new journey for me, and I'm just trying to, you know, enjoy the process and do the best that I can. So um, I haven't reached that point yet where I'm, you know, gunning for the next person. The only thing that I'm gunning for is, is getting that rematch going and, and making sure that we, you know, set that date and get that rolling. So after that, then maybe I'll be able to tell you what it's going to be like having to, you know, gun down the next person. But as far as, you know, right now, I'm, I'm in a good position and I'm sitting pretty. Is there any update on when that date possibly could be or any ideas or months you have in mind? Uh, no, I, I don't know much. Maybe June, July, August. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a August, a Leo lion baby. So if I could fight my birthday month, that'd be great, too. Um, I, I don't have a particular date, but, you know, as long as I stay active and, and get a, a date set, you know, that's kind of where my head's at. So we'll see. Did you hear the news of her possibly changing camps? Like she left ATT to just start her own thing? Yeah, what a zoo, huh? Yeah. What do you so what do you make of that? <laughs> that situation. Uh, uh, best of luck, you know. I just hope everything goes uh, according to to her plans and that and that we can, you know, get this fight book. That's all I care about. Going off the back of that, um, like you kind of said there, are you worried that with all the stuff going on, it may delay her timeline to get back in. And if so, are you willing to wait as long as it takes? Or if this is something that isn't going to start to materialize on your timeline, do you maybe look at other fights? Um, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, Amanda probably wants to get back in there as soon as possible and she wants to try to get her belt back. So I don't anticipate her waiting, you know, a, a super long time. I, I think that she wants to get in there as soon as possible. And, and, and summer's looking good for me. I'm free and uh, I don't know what she's doing, but, you know, summer summertime is good for me. Just out of curiosity, there's rumors of a show down in Brazil in May. Would you be interested in fighting her in Brazil? No, thanks. Take it that much. <laughs> you, when you beat her, you, you shocked the world. No one gave you a chance. Now coming in, you'll be the favorite. How do you feel about that? Somebody told me that I still was going to be the underdog. Um, I, I don't know. You know, uh, everyone likes to talk about the, the betting lines and, and, you know, underdog and favorite and all that stuff leading up to the fight. I do my best to, to put my blinders on. I don't pay too much attention to the odds and the odd makers and being an underdog or not a favorite. You know, I just focus on what I do and what I know I can do. Um, I let the people that like to bet and stuff take care of the rest of that stuff. That stuff's not for me. I'm not into the betting stuff. How has your life changed since that moment where you said, I'm not surprised? <laughs> Well, my phone's been a bit busier, but I can tell you that, you know, I went to uh, back to Chicago and, and that next morning I was up at 630 to take my kid to school. Um, my daughter obviously kicked out the cleaning lady because my house was a wreck and I had no choice but to mop and sweep my own floors. Life for me hasn't really changed other than the fact that my phone's a little bit, bit busier. But uh, aside from that, it's, you know, big reality check when you go home and, you know, you still got to, you know, take out the garbage. UFC 270, can you give me a breakdown of the two main fights? 
Is this UFC 270? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I hope uh, Brandon Moreno wins, and I and I'm I hope Francis Ngannou wins. Uh, but I I like his opponent as well, and I think that that's going to be a great fight. Honestly, fans win because anytime those two big guys get inside the octagon, it's always going to be a good time. You don't want to blink. You got to get your popcorn ready because anything can happen. Those guys are heavy hitters, and uh, it's going to be a great fight. Juliana, just curious, where is your belt now? Oh man. So I I I've been pulled in two different directions on this thing and like do I take it with me everywhere I go or do I leave it at home right now it's at home um, and the belt etiquette is something that I'm still trying to figure out right it's like people want to hold the belt they want to take pictures with it and I'm all for it but then like I got a scratch on it the other day and I was like I think I should not let every you know Tom Dick and Harry you know hold the belt I, I really don't know maybe you guys can help me out and try to like let me know do I let everybody hold the belt do I only you know do I carry it with me everywhere I go like I, I really don't know it's it's all new to me if you let mario lopez touch it i'm sure we're all qualified too um, <laughs> yeah. hey as long as it brings more attention to the ufc right so i'm gonna go get another one in a few months so this one can just be the starter one and you know anybody can touch it as far as i'm concerned but somebody some people get really mad they're like no you, you worked really hard for it you should be the only one to touch it. I'm like it's not like the stanley cup you know what i mean it's it's a it's a belt and if it can bring somebody joy to touch or hold and take a picture with the belt by all means you know hold the belt take it but just don't scratch it up too much. You don't want to know what they do to the Stanley Cup, for sure. But, um, you know, a lot of fighters, they're fighting out of big camps, those, you know, super teams. And you did something different. You kind of put your own team together in Chicago. We don't know a lot about your camp. So what does it feel for you to be representing a, a smaller team as opposed to, you know, those bigger names like American Top Team and Extreme Couture? But you have your own thing going on. You know, my thoughts on that are, are very simple. Mat time, mat time, it doesn't matter. I started from a tiny little garage in Spokane, Washington, and they're still over there training in that same garage. So it's all about mat time. And when you get into these state-of-the-art facilities and the state-of-the-art equipment, that's cute. It's all fluff, though. As long as you put in that mat time, whether you're training in a basement, whether you're training in a garage, whether you're training in a state-of-the-art facility, you just got to put in the time. And I think that that uh, work will speak for itself. Obviously, you finished the fight with the choke, but it was really the, the grit and, and the hands. You know, the hands really pieced Amanda up. And so we know that you train with Wayne Gregory, but I think not a lot of people know about Wayne. Could you kind of, you know, just tell us what he's meant for your skills in your camp overall? Yeah. Wayne Gregory is an amazing, amazing man. He's an amazing coach. He's an amazing father, husband. Uh, I can't speak uh, enough great things about Wayne Gregory. He is the first American to win in the Lumpini. I think that's how it's called Lumpini Stadium in Thailand. Uh, so the first American to, to knock out a, a Thailand champion over there. And uh, if you go and YouTube his name, you can just see the wide array of videos that he has like sh sh Shudokan fighting. Like um, he he's literally one of the pioneers in fighting um, that I'm familiar with and to be able to be trained by him is uh, is an honor and I think that it's something very cool and he's like my my ace up my sleeve he is my um, number one fighting consultant I talk to him about everything every single day we're checking in with each other and, and Wayne is just a brilliant brilliant mind in in fighting uh, Juliana I'm curious to know um, you should take and now she's moving down to 125 and that was partially because she didn't want to have to have you guys fight each other because you're friends. What are your thoughts on her kind of making that sacrifice to allow you to thrive even more and just not have that drama anywhere on your radar? I think that that's great. You know, if Misha, um, which I do believe will find success, a ton of success at 125 um, and, and can fight for the belt at 125, I think there would be nothing better, especially for the UFC and for the sport and particularly for the state of Washington to have two Washington champions at 125 and 135. That's that's the plan. And one more. Um, it seems like Aspen Ladd is going to be fighting Irene Aldana at UFC 273. Do you feel like that is a fight that's you know after Amanda probably going to line up the next contender in this division? I mean, if they can both make weight, I know both of those girls have had some issues making 135, so I would uh, like to see them both make weight. But yeah, best uh, luck to may the best woman win. A couple more. Uh, they spell your name right on the plating with the Enya? <laughs> uh, I haven't seen the plating yet. Thank you for reminding me, Dave. I need that plating on that belt ASAP. Um, but I know I haven't seen it, um, and I hope that they do. Yeah, it was so funny because for the longest time since I've been in the UFC, I've been complaining about the fact that they weren't getting the Enya right on my name. And so I've, I've, 
literally like said it a million times and it's getting, I, I feel bad for even like having to mention it. Now I saw that they made a poster for the UFC for the meet and greet that I have tomorrow and they spelled my first name wrong. And so I'm like, oh my God, if it's not the first name, it's the last name. I feel, I feel even bad saying anything for it. And then I'm thinking like, are they doing this on purpose? Are they just trying to piss me off? <laughs> Was it two ends? They- it's two ends, yes. Uh, how often does your daughter uh, bring up the belt to her friends? Uh, I mean, literally all the time. She just asked me on the way over here when me and Amanda were fighting next. Uh, yeah. And then yesterday we went to Disneyland. It was her fourth birthday yesterday and we went to Disney. And when we were, um, on the cars ride, we end up like racing the car next to us. And when we won, she's like, we're the champions like you, mama. I'm like, yeah, we are. (laughs) Hello, Juliana. Hello. Hi, how are you? In Spanish, um, English. Um, ¿Consideras que has dejado la vara muy alta luego de haber vencido o destronado a Amanda Nunes? Um, ¿Y crees que países como Ecuador u otros países de Sudamérica, eh, al margen de Brasil, puedan pronto coronarse o llevarse el cinturón de UFC? You're asking me about uh, the UFC and the belt in other countries? Yeah, he's asking about the South American countries. What do you think about Ecuador, Venezuela, other countries uh, aside Brazil? In some moment, that countries or that fighters can can reach a, a goal like a title in the UFC. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we saw it with Brandon Moreno. We saw it with um, you know Cain Velasquez and finding success and becoming a champion. Um, it's it's definitely possible, and I think that it's incredible uh, for me in my position to to be a Latina and to uh, become a champion. And um, I definitely think that there's a lot of eyes now, especially watching to to let all the the women out there, men in general too, anybody old, young, uh, you are capable of reaching your dreams and, and capable of, of executing these plans that you have for your life as long as you work hard and, and are dedicated with passion. Hey, Juliana, down here to your right. I saw a few weeks ago you got a chance to go to WWE. How did that come about and, and, how, and how was that? Uh, let's see. So that came about one of my good friends, Chris Provino, helped me out with the tickets there. And of course, Chad Bronstein. And uh, that was awesome. Honestly, I have to tell you, when I first saw the first like, you know, three, four minutes, I could not stop laughing to myself because I had just won the biggest fight of my life. It was a real fight. And I was like watching this and I was like, <clears throat> like, I can't believe these people buy this. But then like after the five minutes went on, I was like, this is incredible. These guys are insane. Like these guys are like serious athletes. It was it was awesome. And and then I, I got introduced to um Rick Flair's daughter, Charlotte Flair. And, and I know Chris was like, make sure you put in a good word for me with Charlotte. And I was like, okay, I thought he was talking about some PR chick. I was like, when I see her, I'll let her know you said hi, you know? And then when I saw that she came out in this big dramatic thing, I was like, oh, that's who he's talking about. She was incredible. They were all incredible. I loved it. And uh, things kind of came full circle for me because I saw Shayna Baszler come out and she got pen- pinned in like 10 seconds. And I was like, this is so crazy. Like I'm sitting front row at WWE right now. And, and of course the guy on the mic, he was very, you know, um, um, compliment complimenting me a lot and um, it was it was a really great time my daughter loved it she loved it thank you yeah absolutely last one do you think Amanda's making a mistake taking this fight right to you the second one not taking time maybe a tune-up or something you know, if it were me, and and this is just based on my own experience, when I lost to Jermaine, I wanted to, you know, hide under a rock and die and not come out for another year. Uh, my coach, Wayne, uh, thank you for that, literally was like, you have to stay active. You have to stay active and you need another fight. So I turned around and a month later I was fighting Sarah McMahon. Uh, if it were me, I would want to stay active. I would want to take another fight and, and go back in there and, and try to avenge that loss immediately. So I, I think it's in her best interest to stay active and to to try and do that. Thanks, guys.